I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today, reporting from New Orleans at the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions. The news here today was about prevention, mainly primary prevention, with the results of the landmark Jupiter trial. Um, to discuss those findings, I'm meeting now with uh, Dr. Robert Bono, a former president of the American Heart Association, um, also with Dr. Anthony DeMaria, who happens to be the, the editor-in-chief of the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, and finally, Dr. Gordon Tomaselli, who is program director at this year's AHA. Um, so I'll start with you, Dr. Bono. Um, the big, big buzz here on this trial. What's your take on the findings of Jupiter? Well, there is big buzz. This was a huge trial involving over 17,000 patients who were randomized uh, to receive resuvastatin, uh, 20 milligrams versus uh, uh, no resuvastatin. They did not meet the standard criteria for treating with statins. They had LDL cholesterol less than 130, but they all had an elevated CRP, which was the basis of the trial. And, and uh, as I'm sure everyone's heard, this was a uh, very strongly positive trial in terms of cardiovascular endpoints and mortality. Uh, being reduced significantly with resuvastatin. I think there's a couple take-home messages. Uh, one, this clearly will impact uh, new guidelines development uh, in ways which uh, we cannot yet discuss, of course, but uh, clearly uh, whether patients should be tested for CRP will be uh, obviously discussed by the next uh, guidelines uh, groups and also uh, what the uh, LDL target should be. Um, and uh, I clearly will wait for new uh, guidelines developments in, in that arena. Until then, I think the take home message is, is essentially that so many cardiologists uh, are already treating patients who have LDL cholesterols uh, above 100 and uh, less than 130. And so uh, in some cases, uh, these new data may or may not change some practices if some physicians are already aggressively treating um, uh, patients uh, with cholesterols in, in this range. Um, and uh, if, if physicians are not doing that, this could have some impact on their practice. The uh, trial included many patients who had, did have other risk factors, uh, high BMI, uh, high blood pressure, um, and uh, 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 other other metabolic abnormalities, but even in those patients who had no other uh, 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 obvious risk factors, uh, all they had was an elevated CRP. Uh, this uh, drug also reduced their risk as well. So this could have an important impact on uh, on uh, practice. Thank you. And and what about you, Dr. Demary? What's your take on this? Well, I, I think as Bob says, there's enormous excitement about the potential to further reduce. Uh, uh, cardiac mortality with statin therapy, uh, I think the wait-see here involves a couple of things. Uh, number one, there was a recent article that CRP may be elevated genetically, and in those patients it doesn't convey a risk, and so there's some question about whether all CRP measurements uh, have the same significance. Uh, we're told that about 20 percent of the patients who were screened were actually enrolled, so the number of patients this may be applicable may be somewhat less, and we're looking at an overall absolute about 1.2 percent reduction in, in heart events uh, over 19 months, so, so that although it's 44 percent in absolute terms, it's relatively small, and we don't have the long-term safety data. So. I think that's responsible for, uh, as Dr. Bono says, uh, people saying, let's see what the guidelines committees come up with when they put all this data together, the positive findings of Jupiter along with these other factors. Mm -hmm. And you, Dr. Tomaselli, um, your thoughts on this? I would concur with what's been said. I think uh, there's still a, an element of kind of wait and see. The trial itself was very impressive in terms of the ability of resuvastatin 20 to lower LDL cholesterol, profoundly lower LDL cholesterol, in addition to uh, lowering um, uh, the high sensitivity CRP level. So that, that's a bit of a confounder in my mind. Is it, is it high sensitivity CRP? Is it something else? Postdoc analyses suggest that, in fact, accounting for lipid lowering, there is something to be said for the lowering of high sensitivity CRP and reducing the overall death rates, and I think, uh, or major adverse event rates. So, so I think this is clearly going to influence practice, uh, for better or for worse, perhaps in some cases. But uh, I think it's going to be important to consider in reevaluating guidelines and reissuing guidelines. And I, I, I would say that uh, I would reemphasize the point that the relative risk reduction was really quite profound, but the absolute risk reduction, particularly for heart endpoints, that is non-fatal MI, stroke, and cardiovascular death, was was about a percent. So. Um, uh, this is going to uh, uh, probably incur some cost, 
um, some cost in actually measuring high sensitivity CRP and then treating with statins. So I think, uh, I think the final cost benefit analysis really, really awaits us in the future. And uh, the one reassuring piece, I guess, from this and from other studies that were presented today was that there doesn't appear to be uh, a signal, again, in relatively shorter term studies, that statins and lipid lowering, uh, extensive lipid lowering, are uh, associated with an increased risk of death from other causes like cancer. So um, let's stay with you for a minute, Dr. Thomas Elliott, and you said that you, um, you thought it might have an influence on practice. You weren't sure exactly what that would be. I'd like uh, each of you to just sort of think um, how, how rapidly do you think this is going to, to affect uh, daily practice. A physician told me today that she thinks it's, gonna, it's going to affect the questions that her patients ask her um, because it's got so much news about this. So let's, a little prediction here. Well, I think it's going to influence practice almost immediately. I think, uh, and in fact, a lot of this is going to be driven by information that patients get themselves, and they're going to be asking questions about their CRP levels. They're going to be asking questions about treating their CRP levels for prevention of, uh, uh, prevention of uh, coronary heart disease events. So, so I think it's going to influence practice, uh, uh, if it hasn't already, since we already knew that, uh, that the trial had been stopped prematurely because of benefit of the drug. Mm -hmm. What about you, Dr. DeMario? Yes, I, I think many physicians uh, have been convinced that our societal levels of cholesterol are, are excessively elevated. What we consider normal is not appropriate. In fact, based upon hunter-gatherer tribes and our LDLs at birth and, and LDLs in other mammals, many physicians have concluded a long time ago that our, our current recommendations are a bit too high, and I see this as perhaps uh, uh, being the straw that really uh, carries everything over and that physicians uh, uh, broadly will be much more aggressive in their lowering of cholesterol. Well, I, agree, I agree with what, both what Gordon and Tony have said, and maybe reemphasizing Tony's point that I think ever since the 4S trial and all the subsequent uh, statin trials since then, our, our, our feeling about what is too high a um, LDL cholesterol and total cholesterol has been uh, dropping, and uh, I agree that uh, many physicians are already treating patients uh, very aggressively. Now, maybe not this aggressively. This was a pretty sizable dose of a very um, potent statin. Uh, 20 milligrams of resuvastatin, and uh, what we don't know is whether a different statin, uh, uh, maybe a lower dose uh, in this population could achieve very similar results. Maybe we don't need to drop the LDL cholesterol to 55 in, in, in all, everyone, uh, even with a high CRP. Um, of course, we cannot address uh, that particular question uh, with the available data, but I, I think this will drive many uh, physicians to consider use of statins. Uh, where they may not have previously, and clearly patients will be asking about this. Well, I want to thank all of you, and uh, I invite all of you back here again tomorrow at the AHA, where we're going to be hearing even more news from late-break clinical trials and some interesting news on the interventional front. In New Orleans, at the American Heart Association, I'm Peggy Peck, MedPage Today.